Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 391 of the Drunk Dasher Podcast. I'm host oh, 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 God. I'm host <laughs> <laughs> It's I'm, uh, uh, Tyler. It's joining me with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Well, I'll tell you what. I feel like I've heard probably the best remix of 2020 <laughs> so far. I could not even remotely think that Vin Diesel could talk himself. <laughs> Up until I just got done listening to Days Are Gone. <laughs> Such a lyrical masterpiece Those uh, that Vin Diesel is. All those lyrics, those majestic lyrics, and all that uh, smooth, savory sound, you know, it's like, wow. I'm impressed. Definitely 10 out of 10 material. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty goddamn good. How about yourself, Tyler? <laughs> I'm doing great. This was funny. Like literally 90 seconds before we hit, I had him listen to uh, before we record. I had him listen to uh, "Days Are Gone" by uh, Vin Diesel, and um, to hear a man's heart and soul be destroyed um, audibly um, is is something. I gotta tell you that. But I I gotta admit to you, Gables, I love this song. I know the, you do. The, the question isn't really if do I love the song. The question is how many times do I listen to the song. It dropped Thursday night about eleven o'clock my time, Central Time, and it's it's easily in the sixties. Um, <laughs> I had a I had to work all day Friday, and I've, I've talked about it in the past. You know, I'm I'm, I'm deliver pizzas, uh, and uh, usually I listen to podcasts. Go ahead and knock us podcast. Nay, Gables. Nay, I did not listen to a single podcast in my entire eleven hour shift. I listened to Days Are Gone. On repeat. <laughs> and... Oh my god, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I could not keep a straight face throughout that entire song that you Oh were man, I... and here you are listening to it for like an I can't shift. stop. It, it's it <laughs> is just it's so positive, man. And a year you know and it's oh, it, like yes. feel like I do the first song. It's 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 a nice you know you know, get your heart racing a little bit, get you a little pumped up, and it's it's good in like a, a, a ironic way. It's not really that great. It's just a, a generic song. This one, I don't know. It's got me, Gables. I can't stop listening to it. It's just like <laughs> I I was listening to music on uh, when I was I was listening to music to take a shower, and I I put on something, and probably Tay Tay. I was you know I was listening to Tay Tay, and then Days Are Gone came in. About fell in the fuck shower. Just started fucking just, you know, just doing like a little <laughs> doing a little shoulder moves and a little bit of swaying around. About died in the shower, but you know what? As long as I'm listening, <laughs> the days are gone. I'm okay with that. That's you know, that's that's the way I'm meant to go. It's the way I'm meant to go, and I can live with that. You know, uh, <sighs> it's good times. I can't, it's I can't say, man. I mean, yeah, it's positive. It definitely did put a smile on my face. And this is me be, just being real here for a minute. Yeah, it did put a smile on my face. I know there were parts of that song where it's like, yeah, there was. I couldn't keep a straight face. You know, some bit of the lyrics. There was like maybe two verses maybe one line or two line verses or something like that that he had and he would repeat monday oh through saturday yeah. oh yeah so that's that, that's the that's the funny thing about the song is like about they're both songs are about three and a half minutes long yeah. and there's like about a like really like 75 seconds of that is looped twice in the song and there's like a little bit of a, there's a, the bridge in the middle is uh-huh. different but both songs are the exact same like beat for beat like he's like he he wrote like a two minute song. And he's like, ah, shit, we gotta make this three and a half minutes. He's like, ah, just take the first 75 seconds, throw it at the end. And that's what he does. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. The main reason why I listened to that song, I had to keep, I couldn't even keep a straight face is because, I mean, the notes that he hits, I mean, for the most part, they are accurate, but the way he goes through and reaches for some of the high notes or the higher notes for his voice range, it feels hmm. like he's doing a little squeak. Like a preview best yeah, I mean, week while he's going through and doing that. The, and even though it's itself, definitely a lot of auto tune. Yeah, the auto tune in the middle out of nowhere. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is the auto tune doing here? <laughs> yeah, it's it's so great. I I don't know. It's just pot. You know, it's, it's talking about you know it, you know I you know I, I miss the days when uh you know you didn't have to worry about anything. That's what the song is about. You know, days are gone. Well, yeah. You know, it's Monday, Tuesday. I wonder where uh, these days went. Wednesday, Thursday. Time keeps a steady racing. Friday chasing paycheck after paycheck gables and we can yes. all feel that you know when you get when you hit those 20s you know 
it's like, you know, those days are gone. We just, you know, you don't have to worry about anything, anything, uh, you know, cause shit, I miss those days when I didn't worry about anything, anything, you know, <laughs> I've listened to this song a lot, as you can tell, uh, uh. to the, the part where like, um, I was joking around with the guy at work on Friday when it came out. Cause, uh, he's like me like 10 years ago. And, um, I was like, I, I had him listen to like, feel like I do when it came out a while ago. And he's like, dude, just get in the car with me, man. Let's go for a ride. Let's just listen to the days are gone. And he thought it was a bit. He's like, dude, he's like, all right, cool. Like he thought I was being ironic. And like, I have the button on my car where I can just like hit, you know, skip song or go back. And I'm like, I was like, I'm like, the song that plays after this is terrible. So I just keep hitting the back button. And I start the song over at the end. And he's like, okay, whatever. He didn't believe me. And then we took, we went for a drive. It was like, you know, 10 minutes away. Um, not even. Uh, and uh, Gables, was I going 65 and a 30? While listening to the song on repeat the entire time with him, scaring the shit out of him. Uh, yes. More so maybe the fact that I was listening to Vid Diesel on repeat than the fact I was going 65 <laughs> and 30. Uh, yes. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> was that pizza delivered hot and fresh? Yes. Yes, it was. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, I uh, I can't. It's just, it, it's just a... F- it's not like a great song, but for, you know, it's I, I obviously I am a Fast and Furious fanboy. I admit that I, I played Fast and Furious Crossroads. I beat it in a day. I have a fa- Fast and Furious coffee cup that I drink out every day. I, I admit that. Uh, do I own every copy of Fast and Furious? Yes, I do. Um, I will admit, though, Vin Diesel. I don't like Vin Diesel much in anything else. Triple X is OK, but uh, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. But um. Yeah, it was just really funny, like your reaction after I uh, we got to listen to it, and it's just like I, I think I broke the man. I broke the man, <laughs> the myth, the legend. Who knew? Who knew? Vin Diesel singing. It wasn't coronavirus. It wasn't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, something stupid Nintendo did. Uh, oh. It was Vin Diesel singing that did it for him. But to me, oh, man. I feel like I, you know I feel melded. My heart <laughs> no longer broken. Sadness, it's gone away. You know, we're we're getting that time of, time of year now where it's getting dark now at five o'clock. We had daylight savings time today, oh, yeah. um, which to me I look like that's just one more hour I get to spend listening. Days are gone. No shit. Yeah, you know that's the way I look at it. Uh, you know, it's just it's five o'clock. You know, it's you look outside. It's five thirty. Fuck the sun's down. It sucks. Put on the days are gone. Fuck it, dude. Like I feel like this is what people like when they just they just smoke weed because I I never smoked weed my entire life. Um, but, you know, and they smoke weed, and you're like, ah, fuck it, man. That's me when I listen to Days Are Gone. Bam. <laughs> you know, we're, we're talking some high shit here. Some good, that's good good right there. Don't do drugs, guys. Just listen to Vin Diesel. Uh, that might be the podcast title. Don't do drugs. Listen to Vin Diesel. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, other than that, uh, Gables, you know, uh, as you try to put your, put your life back together now, uh, <laughs> like, how, how are you doing? <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Just basically did a little bunch of things over my workplace, you know, business as usual. There was a good moment on Friday where I was cleaning out these two drawers that looked like they came from, like, uh, a big piece of furniture. They were filled with uh, donation stuff that the people dropped off. And what's hilarious is, like, I was washing and cleaning both of them. The big drawer in general I finally got to. Found a Black Widow there. Took it outside. Obviously, I had that thing crawl somewhere outside on the deck, because I ain't tangling with that shit in the morning. And so, I didn't think anything of it. I took the dresser drawer inside, this large dresser drawer, priced it, put it on the front deck of my workplace, because we have furniture outside that uh, people can go through and buy. So, I placed it right in front of this rail, and this is important. Yeah, I placed it right in front of this rail where we have a glass thing that overlooks the parking lot. So around an hour before my shift ends, one of my coworkers, she comes up to me and is like, because we just got through carrying a piece of furniture and uh, helped load it inside of some person's vehicle. It's like, dude, look. she comes over to me and is like, dude, let's, look at what you did. It's stuff like that without even noticing it. And I stand where exactly where she's standing. I look and there's a sticker on the back of the drawer that I put out earlier this morning. And the sticker, and I'm paraphrasing it, basically said... Sometimes I think everyone in this town is just high. <laughs> I mean, you live in Washington, so it makes sense. 
<laughs> no, it's the fact that I didn't catch it, but at the same time, when I told my boss about it, she just started laughing her ass off. <laughs> but, yeah, that was Gable's funny moment of the week. But, uh, other than that, man, it's gaming, getting my stuff gone through and done, trying to get my extra life playlist structured and organized before next week. Mm-hmm. But other than that, man, it's pretty much it. How about yourself? Doing okay, you know. I, I, was, I was showing Gables for the uh, the podcast when we, we got on Skype. Uh, I got my new TV in. Um, it's a new 75-inch TV, so that's pretty awesome. Um, I, um, when I bought it, I didn't realize... Uh, when I, I bought a different one, and uh, it's from it's a TCL, which I didn't realize, and this isn't like a political thing at all. It's a China-based company. Uh-huh. And because of COVID, obviously, and then also the issue going on with, um, you know, the government's uh, disagreeing on stuff being exported and imported and whatever. Uh, yes. It's been a big issue about getting TCLs over here and or just in, in general, anything made in China over here. Uh, and uh, so my I kept I ordered the, this TV like three weeks ago and it just without even telling me my order kept getting delayed, delayed, delayed. And um so I was like, fuck it. I just canceled it. And I found one they had in stock at the store um, and just had it delivered to me and got it on Tuesday. But when I ordered it, so the TCL, like it has like the legs on it, you can adjust them. So you yes. can actually like, if, if your TV stands long enough, you can like bring them in and out depending on how you need it. Well, I didn't even think about it. Like, I was, it was more of like a rage. Like I'm, I'm irritated. I just want my fucking 75 inch TV. So I found this LG one that the store actually had in stock. And uh, it's, it's a little bit more expensive, like 150 bucks more. But it's an LG instead of TCL. Um, so I, I'm, I, my other, my 60 inch is an LG. And um, so I got that on Tuesday. But I didn't even think to check about, like, look at the measurements about, like, see if it's possible to adjust the legs. Didn't have that. Uh-huh. So my TV stand was, like, like the legs were, like, four inches too long for the TV stand. And this TV is, like, 80 pounds. So wow. I, I had to, like, rig it up on the on a, a different like put a table next to my tv stand and rig it on there so it's a little lopsided like like i don't know like an inch difference between the left leg and the right leg so it's a little lopsided but fucking huge it's beautiful um and then today uh, i ordered a mount and uh i I've, i always love tvs when they're mounted it looks great and stuff like that um but uh I, it just scares me personally about mounting them and just like I, it just gives me anxiety about them falling but also yeah. being like you know me like literally having a, a table on the side to hold my ta- my t- my new nearly thousand dollar tv up on my on my is also giving me a lot of anxiety so i finally just bought a, a mount my parents came over today got it mounted looks beautiful over my uh, fireplace uh tv stand that i have um, and it works out perfectly. And I had to do like, I'm like, I like worked out great with, a, with people having PS fives now and actually getting like, real measurements. People do comparison shots where it's like, okay, now I know how high I need to put my TV up. So I had like, uh, I, I think the PS five is like, it's around 15, 16 inches tall. And, uh, and I was like, I was a little worried. Cause I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to put this thing, goddamn thing because I just, I didn't have room in my TV stand before. Or like, I had to like kind of put it behind it. Cause like my shelves in my TV stand are not, uh, or aren't wide enough for it to sit, sit down sideways and aren't tall enough to put them in there even if i if i took the shelf out and just made it one big thing i can do it but it's like i don't have stuff in there i don't like it's just, so anyways i had to put it up like way higher and so it's kind of weird it's, you know I, i'll get used to it but it's like i have to like look up a little bit now when i sit down but i like I actually did the measurements i'm like all right it's gotta be I, like i made it 18 inches above my tv stand but um <laughs> looks great i love it i got my uh, sleeping charmander stuffed animal thing with jiggy uh, holding down the fort where my uh, PS5 is going to be. I got my my Switch and my, I got a new sound bar and all that shit. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, nice. Looks really nice near, uh, you know, it's almost two years, year and a half later. Really uh, feels like home now. Uh, next thing I gotta do is actually put shit on my wall. I don't have anything on my wall. There you go. So, yeah. But that's my next my next big adventure. But, uh, you know, uh, the only thing I got to work on now is my, my, my cables are like, it's like a nightmare about it's just all, they're all hanging down and it's like this place it's like an older building it's like it was like it used to be like a military uh like not a base but like that's really this were like all like the people like that uh were in like the military and the army and stuff because there's a couple of bases not too far away from us or from me where i live and uh like they this is where they lived and then it got converted into apartments and uh so like uh there's like the plugins are like kind of like they're very spread out and also a lot of them 
like most of them, nine percent of them here are two prong. So it's like, like it's just a nightmare. Like I got cords everywhere. But that's uh, yeah, I got that. I got I also I showed you gables. I got my dual sense controller here. I got my my yes. second one. I got or my first one, but this will be like my, my backup controller, which. Um, it, it, it's you know I can't use it which is a, which is you know kind of sucks I I've charged it you can charge it on you know it's just it uses USB C so I use my Nintendo Switch charger for it um, well yeah but um yeah the thing is it's I I I you know I didn't like the white and black uh, look event you know at first because especially because everything I have here is darker colors and black but I really like when I see it with my own eyes. Uh, I, I'm actually a big fan of it. It's just like what threw me off was the weight of it. It's, it's, it's actually, it's really heavy. Like, like I, you know, I was telling you for the show, it's like, I, I'm, you know, like with the Xbox one, I was kind of used to the weight cause I always put batteries in it. So I was used to that. So there was a little extra weight there, but it's like, even this is like, um, you know, it's throwing me off how, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's heavy. And it's probably a good solid four or five pounds, which you know, it's not like a lot, but for controller, it's, it's fairly heavy. It's, it's just bigger too. Uh, but I don't know. I like the overall, the, the way the buttons feel and like you kind of like, you can tap it a little bit or flick it and you can like hear the springs in them, um, you know, for the haptic mm. feedback. So I'm excited to actually, that, you know, when that comes, you know, we're, we're getting close. We're, you know, it's Sunday night right now and we're, you know, 11 days away from, uh, PS five is coming out. Um, but I got, I got that in and then, you know, it's just, I don't know how cables, but I got in a TikTok really hard for like a half a day. Um, okay. you know what? so everybody knows what TikTok is just a bunch of short videos yeah. but, but like I you know like I'll see like videos and like it's kind of like funny dumb shit and uh, on like Facebook or Twitter and stuff like that got me and I yeah. can't like I don't even remember what it was but well, that's funny I'll check out I want I want to check out TikTok so I downloaded the app and uh, I was off Thursday and um, this is Thursday morning I'm sitting here drinking my coffee usually I'll, I'll mm-hmm. watch them I'll watch them ESPN or YouTube whatever it's about 10 o'clock or so Watch. I just do. I download TikTok, pause whatever I was watching. Eleven thirty, cables comes around. I'm still watching TikTok. I'm like, I need to turn it off. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm watching. And ninety percent of the shit, it's like you're waiting for the joke, the the hit, or you're waiting for the build up to set the setup for the joke, and you're waiting for like that payoff. And nine percent of the time, they don't come. And then it's like, all right, that's stupid. I just sneak off of it. Then about five o'clock it comes, cables. Oh no. I like pull. I open up TikTok again. I don't even know why. Just did. <clears throat> Hour. Hour and a half goes by. Still on TikTok. I'm like, this is stupid. I'm just gonna stop. And I'm trying to get better at going to bed earlier because I start my new job uh, this week. And um, I'm like, I need to actually like go to bed at a decent time. Blah blah. blah. Went to bed about ten o'clock Thursday night. Start watching a movie. You know, waiting to zone off, go to sleep. About eleven o'clock. Open up TikTok. One thirty in the morning. Oh no. I'm still watching TikTok. And I, I'm not a, like I you know I have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, I have them all, but I'm not actually big into them. I I combine, I don't know. There's people I'll be like Gables. You've been on social media for pretty much for months now. You you do you can take breaks, like I admit I'm I'm not able to take those breaks. Um, like I do have a, you know like a lot of people I, you have that addiction to social media. Um, yeah. My main thing is is Twitter. Like, I don't give a fuck about Facebook. I go on Facebook. Like I go on the talk shit Facebook group. And that's about it. Um, but my big thing is is like Twitter. Like but like. My like I've talked about before, my Twitter is mostly sports and video game related, so it's just like the shit I want to hear about that I, I I go through, and I but I combine throughout the day, maybe an hour, on 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 those. And that's including me, like that's bathroom time too. I would say forty percent of my time on social media is me in a, in a, on the toilet. Um, <clears throat> so yes, so for me to spend five six hours on TikTok in one day, and not even a and we're talking fourteen hour span. So literally half of that, my awake time of that day was spent on TikTok. It was, it was insane. Uh, and it's just like dumb shit. It's so stupid. I don't know how I got into it. I don't know why. I saw so I'm like, I need to go to bed. I got to work in the morning. I got to get up. I got to be up at, in like seven hours. I need to go to bed. And I, I went through and I, I just deleted the app. But I, I, I don't know why, but it just, it got me. And it's so easy. Like I get it now. Like, I, you know, I've, I've seen people and I know people that like they'll spend hours just sitting there scrolling through their feeds or scrolling through watching videos like that. I'm like, I don't get why you do it, but it's like, it's easy to get sucked in. Like I've done it like over a handful of times over the years where you just like, you're on, you know, you just, you wake up in the morning, you're on, you're on your phone and you just a video, a funny, someone shows a funny video, a funny video and you go on it and then it skips, it goes right to the next one. And the next thing you know, you just watch a bunch of dumb dog videos. Um, 
yeah but that uh, that got me so but uh anyways <laughs> we are a uh, video game podcast uh so speaking of but the most important thing that we do every year gables is extra life um yes. we are less than a week away now uh it is this saturday um we are uh, playing video games 24 straight hours on November 7th. Uh, I don't have, I, I won't know what time I'm starting because of my new job. I don't know my schedule there, but based off, hopefully I don't work super late. I can just, I, I want to try to do something like you're doing Gables where you, as soon as you get home Friday, go to bed and then you wake up and you start around midnight, two o'clock in the morning. And right. um, if I, I'm hoping, I, my, my, my goal is if I get up early enough, do the same thing, come home, eat dinner, let dog out. Um, go to bed, get up, start. That's my plan. Um, but anyways, it is the event we do every year. Uh, this will be my ninth. This will be Gables eighth. Uh, where we, play, like I said, play games twenty four straight hours. We pick our children's uh, hospital we want to, we want to participate in. Uh, and all the money we we raise for this goes to those hospitals, hundred percent of it. Uh, it's Children's Miracle Network hospitals. And you could, you can pick anyone in North America that you want to you want to uh, participate in, or you want to you, you want to go to. Um, you know, you just play games 24 straight hours the money you raise goes to them uh mine goes to iowa city gables goes to seattle um yep. it's a really great event i believe last year it raised about 13 14 million i think in this year is year 11 and i think overall they've raised um over 40 million probably closer to like 50 million at this point um yeah and I, I think so far this year they've already hit around the five five million mark and majority of the money they, they raise is on game day i haven't i haven't looked i haven't put us an update actually in a while about where they are um usually every million you get an update i haven't i haven't seen uh what, what that is but i think they're around the five million mark last time i i looked um or, or seen an update so uh yeah a really cool thing if you guys are interested in doing it just go to extra-life.org uh sign up there tell your friends share it uh really cool thing it's you know I, if you want to donate to us that's great I don't even care if you do. It's just, I'm just want more people to participate, share the share the word of it. Um, yeah, it's a blast. You know, we, we I, it's I always it's my Christmas. Uh, it's my least favorite favorite day of the year. Um, I'm 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 excited when it's over, but I'm also extremely sad at the same time um, that it is over. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. Anything you want to say, Abel, before we we uh, move on to the Meet and Tales of the show? Well, let's see. Very much looking forward to next Saturday. I do have some bit of a plan in mind. I know that Tyler and I will be attempting to play through Resident Evil 6. Attempting? We're going to do it. I know. I know. Starting out, I'm not sure what I'm going to start with, but I am planning to at least incorporate one or two online games, maybe like at the start or maybe like throughout the day. I'm not 100% sure, but I do want to have a little bit of Overwatch that I want to try to play. Nice. I'll make sure my uh, game's updated. Yeah. Yeah, they actually did go through and update that game not too long ago. But um, I want to see if I can use a couple different consoles. I want to try to avoid streaming through the PS4 like I've had done traditionally, and hopefully that will go well. I have my gaming capture card, my Elgato One. This is one of the older models, so it has the backwards compatibility stuff to stream stuff through the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 stuff, if I really need to do that. But other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm looking forward to helping Seattle Children's Hospital, and I'm seeing what I can do to help out sick kids. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, it's a cool, exciting thing we do every year. Um, I'm, I'm really pumped for it. So, uh, yeah, if you, uh, like I said, once again, if you want to check it out, uh, extra-life.org. You know, donate donate to us if you like to. Tyler Courtney, uh, Gabe Bagno over there. It's so weird not calling you Gables on that uh, <laughs> still. Uh, but we're, you know, we're less than a week away uh, for it. You don't have to do it if you want to do it. You don't have to do it all in one day. You don't have to do it all in two days. You don't have to do it all in one weekend or whatever. You can, people can spread it out. I know a lot of people that they, they do 12 hours, 12 hours, or they just, you know, play four hours a day throughout the week, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. You, uh, but just getting the word out there is what's most important. The more people that know about it uh, is, is is better. Um, but yeah, um, Gables, we have a uh, we're we're actually going to do a, another episode right after this uh, because yes. of that because it's just we we usually we used to do it like the week before or like the day before the night before we would record an episode just get it done because we knew like the day after we weren't going to want to do it. And it's just it's it's 
uh, it's too hard because we usually record late and then getting up, you know, it's record late and then got to get up early just makes it harder than it has to be. So we're doing a, yes, it does. a special episode. We got some fun little topics and questions we, we got for ourselves here to do on that. So we'll probably, that's, it'll probably come out Friday sometime, Friday night, Saturday morning. Um, I might, um, uh, probably Friday. So we, it's, we might be some extra life stuff in there, but, um, yeah. Uh, so check back in a, like four or five days, uh, and we'll have the next the 392 will be out. Uh, but there are a plethora of topics this week. Gables, not, you know, some, some pretty big news, but like, not like top shelf news here, but I'm going to start off. One, I got, I got worked out here where we got a couple of PlayStation plus topics here. So starting off, we had, a uh, uh, the game destruction all stars was going to be a, Full price seventy dollar game. We gotta get you saying that now. Full price is seventy dollars. Um, gonna be a PS five launch game. Um, it's the Rocket League style, like, but you get out of your car and you can still fight, kind of shit. Uh, but that was supposed to be coming out on launch day, like I said, for seventy bucks. It is now being delayed until February, and it will be a PS Plus game. And not only will it be a PS Plus game, but it'll be a PS Plus game for two months. Um, so yeah, so uh, there, there's not like. It's weird because there's not like any actual like gameplay out there for this. Like there's, um, there's next week, this week, coming week, we'll have a, an actual a brand new trailer, and I'll show off more about this game. But it's so crazy. This game was like, this got delayed. We're talking two weeks away. Um, this game coming out, and we haven't seen gameplay for it. They're charging full price for it, uh, and I'd argue of like the five big PlayStation games because there's five games, five exclusive games coming out on PlayStation on that day. Actually, uh, six if you include bug, bug snacks, but so actually six big games coming out on that day on November twelfth, and I would I would argue that it was a below bug snacks at six for like hype level and just people wanting mm. to play this game. I don't know. I mean, I think this is a smart idea because you know, we always talk about like you know this game has the potential to be a Rocket League. We talk about with Fall Guys. Talk about with you know Rocket League. Rocket League's the first one to do it. Um, you know, g- games that found an audience because it was a you know it was a, a free download game. Not, well, free in quotations, but um, yeah, I don't. I feel like th- this was the best case scenario because I, I even talked about this about a month ago where I was like, we were talking about looking at the re- games for the rest of the year, and I'm like, that game, I feel like that game's gonna come out, it's gonna get buried. November's an insane month, anyways, and then just in general, it's gonna get buried in its own launch games. Like PlayStation, like this game was gonna be its the most expensive launch game. Um, it has, you know, it's it's not it's not Demon Souls, it's not a Spider Man. Um, it's, you know, Pete doesn't have the buzz like Bugsnax does because of that song. You know, it's like it's just and it's a multiplayer game. Like, there's I don't see how that game's got a chance to succeed. And I look at it like this: this game has a, a chance to find its footing and maybe do something. Uh, what about you, Gables? I mirror a lot of the same sentiments. Obviously, this is the best thing that could have happened for Destruction All Stars. At the same point, you know, delaying it a couple months, they can fine tune what they have. And you are right because we have not seen any other types of gameplay footage from this game and really in depth and since it was revealed first way back when i think when the ps5 stuff was uh being unveiled for the release date or not release date but something like the game showcase stuff for it as far as the whole playstation's plus stuff yeah that's a very smart decision on sony's part this is a game where it probably had some of the least interest in regards to the games that were launching alongside the PS5. Most interested, obviously, being Demon Souls, but yeah, Sackboy's Big Adventure, even the game that is in built in the system. Astro's Playbot, yeah. Ast- Astro's, Astro's Playroom. Playbot. That has. Yeah. That's. More stop putting seventh then. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That has more interest. And from the footage I've seen, I can understand why, because it puts a lot of the features of the PS5, everything else all streamlined and what looks like a mario centric style of platformer which that in and of itself i feel is more appealing than destruction all-stars so when you are charging 70 dollars for a game like destruction all-stars and stuff that in and of itself i feel was a disservice because like you were saying before tyler it was original launch day was going to be inside of november or sometime in november i'm not sure about the exact yeah, november date, 12th but... it's a launch game. okay november 12th so you had November 12th of this game, and that was, at that point, a couple of days, not only before, say, Cyberpunk's release, which, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later because mm. that was also moved. But uh, <laughs> February is the best option, I feel, for this game, and also being on 
PlayStation Plus is a huge, huge advantage. My question, though, is in regards to the people that don't own a PS5, could you go onto the website and get a lot of those games that are free on the PlayStation 5 without having to register that you own a PS5? Hmm. That I, is my main thing that I'm concerned about. I bet you could because um, I remember that was the thing I did. What was the, what's the, the Resogun? Um, yes. Because I remember I didn't get my PS5 until right around Christmas. Uh, and I, I didn't have PS Plus. I literally got PS Plus um, just so I can make sure I had that game. I went on the PlayStation website and just basically just added it to my thing or whatever. Like add yes. it to your library. And I, so I was able to have it when I got my PS4. Um, right. I bet. So I, I think you. I think you will be fine on that. Uh, speaking of, of PS Plus games and you know uh, big launch games, uh, Bug Snacks uh, will be the PS will be the first PS5 game for PS Plus members um, on launch. Um, so uh, just talking about that uh, about that game being uh, you know kind of it's it's known for its catchy tune. Uh, the gameplay looks. I think I'll be okay. I think there. I think there'll be an audience run. It looks like it could be kind of. It looks charming. Um, it's something I might check out. But uh, so for this one is uh, um, if you if you so it only works for PS5 for the PS Plus the part of it is it doesn't work. So if you add it to your library, it only works on PS5. You, it doesn't go back to PS4. But if you buy a PS4 copy, it will go to PS5. Um, or if you buy P- if you buy your own copy of PS uh, of Bugs Snacks on PS5, it will go back to PS4. It's only the PS Plus version that does not uh, have the cross uh, generation, which I think I'm okay with. It's a, it, like you know, it's this game has a lot of buzz around. I feel like a lot of people pro- probably would have bought it anyways. Um, but I, you know, I think I'm not really upset. We're still getting two PS4 games on top of that too. Um, so I don't know. I think that makes sense especially when you're trying to uh you know get people to uh you know get a ps5 continue on ps plus showing people that you're out you know you because that was you know, that was my, my thing i was wondering about was like what's going to be the ps plus games are they going to have ps5 games uh right off the bat like we did for ps4 um it's just a matter i think of you know uh how many how often we'll see i think we could still see two ps4 games in a ps5 one ps5 game a month but you know, this is I don't know, I think this is kind of a cool, exciting one to add. What about you, Gables? Honestly, yes. I do feel like that that's an exciting and definitely a good move too, because for those that want to invest instead of a PlayStation 5 immediately at launch, you not only get that, but you also get a whole slew of any PS4 titles at launch as well. So it's definitely a good move, more incentive. It's a title that everyone wants. I understand if you get the PS5 version stuff, it doesn't. Now you get access to the PS4. But for those that just want to wait, they could event. They could just buy Bug Snacks on the PS4, get the PS5 version for free, and then be settled with that if they couldn't wait to play it. So yeah, I can understand that. But uh, speaking of like the PlayStation Plus stuff, you know, there are a couple of games that were announced in regards to free PlayStation Plus like titles i think it was for this month i want to say i know one of them is a game that i had been playing off and on the switch which was hollow knight the uh that mm. uh that game is actually pretty fun yeah i, I put it on switch it was great you. yeah it definitely is a, a worthwhile metroidvania style game that people should try i have not finished it however it is definitely it definitely has good gameplay i just need to find the time to go and just invest more into it yeah yeah that game is great it's just yeah i i yeah just need to sit down and play that but I, I played it for a few hours and that game was really good for uh even being like a uh the the um oh, geez what's called when you, when you die and repeat like hades roguelike roguelike we're like yeah um but um uh, moving on to some uh, bigger news here uh cyberpunk uh 277 has been delayed again um it's going from November nineteenth to December tenth. Um, so they, they actually posted out a. Uh, we saw that yellow text or that yellow background again. Never good news when we see that. Um, so this is from uh, the devs at uh, at Cyberpunk or at uh, CD Projekt Red. Today we decided to move the release date of Cyberpunk twenty seven seven by twenty one days to their new release date December tenth. Most likely there are many emotions and questions in your heads. 
Uh, so first and foremost, please accept our humble apologies. The biggest challenge uh, challenge for us right now is shipping the game on current gen, next gen, and PC at the same time, which requires us to prepare and test nine versions of of, of it. Which is a crazy thing because you got Xbox One and Xbox One X. You also have Xbox Series S and Series X. That's four right there. You have a PS4, PS4 Pro. Then you have the PS5. That's seven. And then you got PC and you got uh, Stadia, um, which is hilarious, right? The Stadia part. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're testing nine versions while working from home. Uh, since Cyberpunk 2077 evolved towards almost being a next-gen title somewhere along the way, we need to make sure that everything works well and every version runs smoothly. We are aware it might seem unrealistic when someone says that 21 days can make a difference in such a massive and complex game, but they really do. Uh, some of you might also be wondering what these words mean in light of us saying we achieved gold, uh, achieved gold some time ago. Passing certifi certif uh, certification or going gold means the game is ready, can be completed, and has content in it. But it doesn't mean we stop working on it and raising the quality bar. On the contrary, this is the time where many improvements are being made, which will be dis uh, distributed on a day zero patch. Uh, this time period, we uh, uh, we undercalculated. So, um, yeah. So, basically, uh, the biggest issue is just testing everything and make sure everything runs well on all nine versions. Um, you know, and it, I don't know, it's it, it's this argument we always have about this one feels different though. We always talk about like, you know, games being delayed. That's never a bad thing. And I, in this case, still true, still true. That great thing. It's just, it's frustrating when like just a few weeks ago, yeah, I went gold. That was a big ordeal. And then I don't think I've ever games ever gone gold before and then got delayed. And then also the fact, know. like the only thing I can think of was like the NBA EA's sports, like yeah, the NBA elite game came out like, I want to say like seven, eight years ago, or I was supposed to. Like literally, people were IGN and GameSpot and places like that re had reviews or were reviewing it, and then like people like it was shipping two stores, and then like three or four days before it was supposed to be released, got canceled. Uh, like that's the only thing I, I, closest I could think to anything like this. Um, you know, it's just like it's frustrating too when like they they had this whole thing about uh, over a year ago about like how bad we are we're crunching it's like we know we're bad we gotta be better and then you find out uh people have been crunching well, it's not as bad but still been crunching and then like they're making people work uh an extra day every week for the last so like we need they need everybody to work uh, uh saturdays for the last six weeks to make sure this game comes out on time and then just literally this is just a couple weeks ago this happened and then oh no we had to delay it three more days or three more weeks so it's like you've had these people crunching forever uh working longer shifts but working Monday through Friday and then you add an extra day into it because it has to be you have to do this to get the game out by number 19 and then you just delay it anyways it's I don't know my, my feeling about it is like this is the third to fourth date we've had in uh 2020 so it's called April then September then November and now December um it's like I look at like the way like games get delayed that's fine so whatever but it's just like I look at like the way last of us too like we got a date for February I think it was like February 21st and then it got delayed to to uh, to uh, May, and I was like, "All right, that's fine." And then you know, obviously, COVID happened, and then like about six weeks, two months uh, before it was supposed to come out, it got delayed, and they didn't give a date. We didn't get a date for like a month. We had no date, and it's like that was, I feel like the best way to handle it was like, you don't know for sure, uh, you know, just fucking say it's still coming out, give a time period maybe if you can, and then say then then when you're ready, put a date out. And like it ended up being like a month. Uh, delay and month delay. And I, I guess, I mean, I, I, I got to get in that one. It's like, it's end of October. It's last week of October. This game's coming out in literally a few weeks. You can't just say it's coming out this year, but we don't know when I, I guess you're a little, a little more of a time crunch, but I, I don't know, man. It's like, you know, they said like somewhere along the way, it's going to be a next gen game. It's like the big issue is like the, like the, the next gen updates won't be ready until next year. But the, the main issue with the game is getting to work on the PS4 and Xbox one uh, consoles. You know, it's like, that's what they talk about. It's just like, I feel like, I don't know, like, I'm excited for this game. I want it to be good. I'm actually, I'm perfectly fine with this delay. I actually like this delay because I've talked about many times, like, middle of November is fucking nuts for games. Mm -hmm. So that pushing out till, you know, December 10th only eases, like, you know, that, that pressure of, like, there's all these great games that I want to play and get around to. And it's like, that game is going to be the, the, the longest of all of them probably for me to play. And pushing it out. You know, today that's like my last big game probably for 2020. That's awesome. But uh, I don't know. It's just the whole thing is frustrating from the crunching standpoint, from delay after delay. You know, 
saying everybody's got to work more hours because we need because that's the only way it's going to happen. And then it didn't happen anyways. And you know damn well they're not going to stop crunching because of it. And then just the fact we know gold going gold. It's exciting when they, they talk about it, but it's like we all knew it was bullshit anyways because like you know, the the we've all we always install our game and like the day one patch is always there's always that big day one patch anyways we're gonna see and there's a bunch of patches th- throughout the first few weeks of a game coming out but I don't know what about you Gales what's your thoughts I honestly feel like it's not as big as a deal as people are making out to be or complaining about to be perfectly honest with you they wanted to do some fine tuning in regards to the day one patch they're focused on quality stuff it sucks yeah. they moved it again. But at the same time, there was really only maybe one or two games I wanted to play in November anyway. But that month is packed. Absolutely packed. So it's definitely beneficial they moved it to December. And, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Well, very short. Yeah. Like I said, my, my thing isn't the delay. I'm always fine with delays. So I'm never going to be upset about delay. Just all the factors that go into this delay, that that's bothers me. But speaking of delayed games, uh, Far Cry 6 Gables also got delayed. Um, that game, um, I can't remember the... Date. It was supposed to, I think, come out in February. Um, yeah, I believe it was February. So they, uh, Ubisoft, had a a, a, a meeting and a, a fucking like a fiscal year meeting or end of a fiscal meeting, and um, announced that uh, Far Cry Six is being moved out past uh, uh, April first. So it's it's not coming out until the next uh, fiscal year. And uh, there's no timeline under that. So the earliest will come out April 1st. And then also that Rainbow Six Quarantine of the game, like the guy announced a couple years ago, and we just haven't heard anything about since then. There's that weird zombie one um, that we got that just got a tease at last E3. Um, it's also been, it's been delayed, but we never had an actual um, date for that or a timetable for that either. But uh, I don't know. It was like, I don't, what was your thoughts about, about this one? Well, let's see. To be honest with you, the delay is definitely a benefit for Far Cry 6. I believe they have a good firm. I believe they have like a firm like belief of what they want to head in the direction for. That trailer that they revealed the game, the premise of it, definitely was interesting in my opinion. At the same time, yeah, February, they probably are trying to fine-tune something in regards yeah. to the overworld, in regards to getting the next-gen systems focusing on those next gen systems pretty much predominantly so they're probably having some difficulties and remains of consistent frame rates or maybe even like some bit of ray tracing for some aspects of the environment plus the COVID stuff doesn't help anything yeah. either you know so it's going to definitely stretch things a bit but other than that it's kind of the same thing that i have with cyberpunk you know it's like i'm really not too worried too much about it People are going to be taking their time inside of uh, a lot of the game development stuff. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, like going back, you know, delay is never a bad thing. But uh, it's, you know, it's been a weird uh, last few years with Ubisoft where I would I'd argue at the beginning, even up to like the middle of the generation, they're maybe one of the best developers out there about putting out. I mean, they're really bad at the beginning, I should say, with, with uh, Ubisoft, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity and shit like that. But like, it seemed like they definitely like <clears throat> learned a lesson on those and just, you know, they even like, you know, changing the, the way Assassin's Creed games come out, um, things like that, like just totally redid everything and have been great. Um, you know, like Watch Dogs Legion just came out this a couple of days ago and it's like that game was to come out at the beginning of the year. Uh, the, uh, the Phoenix rising game was to come out the, uh, the beginning of the year. It's coming out in December now. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's good that it seems like they're being patient and playing a long game with these ones, uh, even though it looks like uh, for a lot of people are talking about Wash Up Legions is still pretty buggy, but who, who knows what that game would have been like if it came out in uh, February when it's supposed to come out. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's only it's only good good news and better. I, I, my, I'm a little more hyped for that game um, than, I, than I thought it would be after playing Far Cry 5 where I didn't care for it. I feel like a lot of people were like came out of that and it's like, it's a Ubisoft game. You've, you know, it's a, it's a Ubisoft Far Cry game. You play, you played the last four, you played this one, and it's kind of the same idea. So I'm hoping this one's a little different, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. But moving on to another topic here, uh, we had a surprise Nintendo Direct Mini. This is the last one for the year. Um, about 20 minutes long, uh, so a little longer than I think for the most part, usually about 8 to 12 minutes. Uh, so started off, we had uh, Hyrule Warriors uh, Age of Calamity. 
Uh, they announced a demo, which actually kind of got leaked a couple days beforehand, but uh, that's what we happen uh, that the demo there will be a demo. Uh, but the demos came out immediately, um, and all the pro- you could play the entirety of chapter one and all your progress from chapter one carries over into the main game. Uh, Brilliant Default Two has been officially delayed to 2021, which I don't think was a surprise. You know, you're going into November, you don't have a release date yet. Uh, it's now coming out February 26. They talked a, a lot about how like um, they, they had the demo come out in the, early in the summer. And uh, a lot of people didn't really seem to like the, the demo, it sounded like. So they, they talked about how like they had over 20,000 um, people uh, respond to a survey. And they've really taken it to heart and are working on uh, fixing the issues that people have with the demo. Um, then we had the cl- uh, uh, a couple of games come out that you can play in the cloud. Uh, Control, the Ultimate Edition. And uh, that's out now. And there's a free demo you can play that. And then Hitman 3. Um, will be coming to the cloud on january 20th and then uh no more heroes 3 officially was delayed as well so it's be a 2020 game uh that is coming out uh just 2021 is all we got for that and then they also shadow dropped no more heroes 1 and 2 um they were originally on the wii now on the switch and uh, that was something we kind of saw coming because i remember a couple months ago uh it came out that the uh that uh, no more heroes was rated uh i think like in korea um for the nintendo switch and they also announced that uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising is coming um, on December 3rd. Uh, Story of Seasons is coming in 2021. Uh, Part-Time UFO from the developers of the Kirby series. Uh, that's on Switch now. Uh, it's a cute little game there that you can play. Uh, Travel 6 is coming in November. Um, Bakugan comes out November, November 3rd. So that's actually soon. It's Tuesday. Um, and I think yeah, that was pretty much the last of the big stuff out of that. What did you think of this one, Gables? Honestly, it was one of those mini directs where if you liked a specific niche, you were pretty much into whatever types of games that were presented in this uh, last mini direct of the year. I know for a fact there was a couple things I was interested in, but I'm going to address a couple of things I had like personal problems with. Okay. One of them was the whole port of uh, the Tropical 6. That game, that port on the Switch and stuff, from what they initially showed in that trailer, that did not... That did not look good, in my yeah. personal opinion. That looked like something that was low res or anything else. So there's something more to that game that just did not sit well with me in that in that uh, footage mm-hmm. that I did see. Yeah, no, I saw, thing, I'm sorry, well, yeah. real fast though. Like, yeah, that's a thing I've heard from a lot of people though. Is like, uh, are people like uh, on Twitter and podcasts where they said that, that I think Triple Go Five is on the Switch and it's just it's a terrible port. So, go on. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. I nearly laughed out loud because when I saw that footage on my screen, I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's like, it looks, the graphics itself look terrible. It did not look representative of an actual thoughtful port to the Switch. The other thing I did have initial problems with is when they opened up with Bravely Default 2, something was just entirely off about the graphical presentation and also with the, the voice acting stuff. Especially during like the first initial cuts, the first initial sequence and stuff, it didn't seem like the lip syncing was correct in regards to some bits of it, and also in regards to just the overall graphical fidelity of it. It kind of reminded me of uh, how certain mobile games, how some like the stiff animation between like certain things are. The only thing I really saw that was interesting in regards to Bradley Default Two, I do love the aspect of the job systems and how you can go through and learn from different other characters. I'm sure that this is going to be one of these RPGs that you're going to go through and invest in. You'll love the combat. There will be specific characters that you'll love, but maybe the story's not wholly original or that good or maybe that great. I'm just assuming. I haven't played Bravely Default 2. But my initial perception of the game is the, the combat looks fun. The job system stuff is interesting, plus you have individual characters that you want to go into and learn specific classes from. Let's see, more stuff. There was announcements in regards to Hitman coming to the Switch and also Control coming to the Switch. However, it kind of confused me a bit because there was a little sub... There's like a little subtitle things underneath them, which kind of suggested that these things could be streaming only the switch i'm trying to go through and just remember exactly what because they they themselves they both of these com both of these ports 
pardon me. Both of these ports kind of like uh, suggested that these things would be like almost streaming only. Yeah, they're the cloud. Initial things. These cloud versions and stuff. Yeah. That entirely rubbed me the wrong way. One, for a, for some odd reason, you don't want to go through and have fully downloadable versions of them. It's going to be streaming through a freaking connection, which at this point, I don't care what type of internet you got, streaming games, especially through like your servers or whatsoever unless you got the top of the line type of internet stuff where there's not going to be too many input delays or this and that i do not trust any type of streaming game stuff because you'll come through with input lag and come through various stuff and at the same time it's like i'm very upset that there's no physical versions of these games i mean hell no physical versions no actual downloadable stuff on your systems themselves it kind of makes it feel like that both Remini and Square Enix didn't want to go through and initially have these ports of these games worked on to the Switch's architecture. That's the suggestion I got. That's what I perceived when I saw these both of these ports being announced and subsequent will have like cloud versions of them. Because there's supposed to be like another type of cloud version of a game that has been rumored to, to come in the Switch. I've forgotten which was rumored at the same time but there's supposed to be another one that comes to oh that. resident yeah, evil 3 just, yeah resident evil 3 there's rumors that that is that's going to have a cloud version on the switch with those type of like things like i'm glad you're going to go through and go through the effort of having the games playable on the switch at the same time i feel like it's fucking lazy the reason why i say that it's like you don't want to go through the initial effort to to translate and work with the Switch's architecture to have a downloadable content or some, or even in regards to fitting it on a damn game card. I know costs are definitely in line and stuff, but at the same time, go for the extra effort if you're a gaming company, you know? You want to get... there's There are reasons why developers like CD Projekt Red do well with their port of Witcher 3 on the Switch. And that's because they had the people's thoughts and considerations in mind that, hey, even after launch, they were going through and releasing patches. They were upgrading the frame rates, the graphical fidelities and stuff. And now, and even the cross-save things between the Switch version and the Steam version of Witcher 3, a company of CD Projekt Red is miles above in terms of their initial support of their own fan base than certain companies that like Remedy or even like freaking Square Enix in some regards to their support of the Switch in this regards, in this situation. That was the initial beefs that I had did have. Other than that though, it's like the other games, they seemed fine. I mean that little, that uh, UFO game by HAL Laboratories looks pretty fun, I gotta admit. It would be kind of fun just to tinker around with that game a bit since it looks like it's a cool game to have like a couch co-op with another person. Obviously, the big thing that I enjoyed the most was all the No More Heroes news. Absolutely loved the... I think there was a release date for No More Heroes 3. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think there was like... Uh... No, there wasn't. It's just a 2021. Okay. okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Now I'm starting to remember it. I love the initial thing that we did see for No More Heroes 3, but I was equally surprised with the first two games coming to Switch, downloadable on... The same day of the Mini Direct. Fantastic. Not sure if there's any type of uh, physical type of, you know, port, I don't, physical copies. I don't believe so. At the same time. No, it's a shame. But yeah. at the same time, it got me very interested in playing No More Heroes 1 and 2. Because those games, those games are underrated on the Wii. Yeah. I played both of those when they released back around 2008 and I think 2010, respectively. Highly underrated fun professional wrestling like uh, moves and like references inside there plus it's pretty much like within the otaku sort of like a uh, spectrum of things with travis touchdown and stuff that character in general so i did love the parodies of like say otaku culture the things of like lucha libre professional wrestling in that regards and also of uh, the parodies of other video games Oh, especially in No More Heroes 2 with the opening character that one of the assassins is looking like a cloud wannabe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely interested in seeing that. In the whole aspect of things, I feel like this last mini director of the year did hit 
did hit well for people that have been looking forward to a specific game that they wanted. So, like, it was more or less like the last couple of mini directs that we've had where it appealed to certain niches of people. This one was for No More Heroes fans, for ones that like the farming simulators, like the Story of Seasons, and, like, the very hardcore, say, JRPG people that want to play more of the Bravely Default stuff. But uh, I thought that it was particularly okay. My main interest was just No More Heroes. So I personally would give it like a 6 out of 10. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know, I thought it was pretty good. It was definitely one of the better ones of the, uh, you know, that we've had uh, right, throughout right. the year. Like a lot of those partner ones are pretty disappointing. Um, we had the, we had the Mario a uh, couple like couple like the game specific ones, but it's probably one of the better ones of the year overall. You know, you know Bravely Default two being delayed makes sense. Um, the cloud yeah. stuff I'm I'm actually okay with. Where I I look at it, like the control doesn't run super well. It runs better than it did, but like it didn't run very well on the current gen platforms. I, I being on the Switch just sounds like a nightmare. And I've heard that these games don't uh, at least cloud that uh, are control. Um, the, the, if you put in perform because it has performance mode and it has like the gra- graphical mode and mm-hmm. um i heard the performance mode is okay but it doesn't look great but it's okay uh if you play the air mode it's just it's terrible so well okay you know it's like i i think if you people if you're you have a switch and for some reason you don't have a different console and you're just a switch guy um like and you really want to play these games you know, this is the best option for those. Like putting us on, we've seen like Resident Evil Seven, and then Capcom's put a few other games on a cloud service in Japan only. Um, you know, so it, it's it's cool that it's coming it's coming here to the West. Um, I'm okay with this. I mean, I think cloud cloud streaming is probably gonna be the future of gaming. We've already, I mean, we've already been there for the last. You know, we went we went there 15 years ago with music. We went there about 10 years ago with with uh, TV. Uh, I think it's only a matter of time for we're seeing that we're Stadia, Luna, uh, you know, game uh, uh, X Cloud, and now this. I don't know if this is the, this right here is a feature uh, with a Switch, but I, I could see you know we're getting you know we're getting there, and I you know I think like I said, if you want those games on there, and it's like do you want a really shitty port, you know, like because I don't think they're gonna put the resources in to make this game work um, the way we want it to, and it's, if they if it did get to work the way we want it to, it's not. I mean the game the way the game's gonna look is not gonna be because like control especially is like it's more of a graphical showpiece it's a really great game but it's stunning to play when it when it runs it runs great and it looks it's fantastic so and that was on like a ps4 pro and like xbox one x's and pcs uh and they, like this is one of the first big games to like push ray tracing um so i i don't see that game working well on the switch uh you know hitman 3 coming day and date though on there is it's, it's cool um so i don't know i'm it's it, it's kind of a cool idea putting this on cloud, uh, but from everybody what they're talking about so far, it doesn't sound great. And these games are coming out full price. Like I think the ultimate edition is forty bucks on there. It's forty bucks everywhere else. If you really want it, and you have a different way of playing it, like this should be your last resort of playing the game. Um, but it's an interesting concept, I, I would say. Uh, you know, No More Heroes three being delayed that you know makes sense. Like you know. Like I said, it's just like Brave the Fault. Like we're at the end of the year, those games should already have dates by now. If if, if we're gonna be coming out this year, it's it's better yes. and it's packed enough. It's just those games are easily. It's just like the destruction also. It's gonna get buried. Um, better off next beginning of next year probably. Uh, no more hero stuff. One and two being uh, Shadow Drop was awesome. Um, I am I've never played played them before, so I've always wanted to, just never played them. Uh, so I, I, I'm gonna I want to check out at least check out No More Heroes one. Uh, it's probably it, it won't be tough by next year though sometime uh, but I do want to check those out um, the big one though for me like the demo for uh, Age of Calamity uh, I'll talk about that later but uh, that was also seen like I, I wasn't planning on checking out but they said that all your your everything you do carries over is awesome uh, and you're getting their trailer for that showing off more of that like I'm just a fan of that music that art style uh, being back in that world of Breath of the Wild uh is awesome, uh, but yeah, overall, I think it was, it was it was definitely, like I said, one of the better directs of the year. Probably probably the best direct of the year, other than the uh, the Mario thirty five anniversary one that we had uh, back in right. September. Um, but yeah, definitely, I definitely pretty awesome. We, like for the most part, we've just got shadow drop trailers and video game specific directs. So 
um, you know, in the year. And I'm, I'm curious if we're going to have how things are going to go next year. If we're, if they're going to, we're going to, you know, like they can, you know, we don't have to worry about one probably for a couple months at, at, at the earliest, um, what their plan is for, uh, are they going back to partner showcases, minis, like, are we going back to normal video game specific game specific ones? But yeah, no, I thought it was pretty good overall, but, um, Speaking of games, you know, uh, you know, we've been playing Gables, moving into those. Uh, uh, the only little thing I played this week is the actual Hyrule Warriors demo, uh, Age of Calamity demo. Um, it's actually, uh, I was a little surprised how much content was in it. I don't, have you got a chance to play it yet? Not yet. Okay. I haven't had a chance to play the demo. I probably will download it at some point. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I, I uh, downloaded it. Uh, it. There's the first, you have the opening cut scene, uh, some story stuff, uh, and then... There's the first, you get to play the first two missions. And then what's cool about it is actually like you have the map for Breath of the Wild in the game. And on the map, as you do more missions, you unlock more things. Like you can go and you can use resources. Uh, like you don't actually like physically play the game. Like you're not fighting or anything, but like you can, like there's like little things like, oh, there's uh, enemies attacking the stable. And it's like you can go there and like um, use resources like, as you defeat enemies, you like actually like for every um, oh God, what's the little goblin thing um, that you fight? Like every time you kill one of the one the Lizardos, or every time you kill one, you like actually like you you like earn like basically you kill one, you get plus one for killing them uh, okay. specifically for each individual enemy. And so like and there's missions where uh, like you know you're only gonna fight the goblins or the Lizardos, blah blah blah. And at least in the demo. And it's like you can use those to like actually go there and like you spend those resources. Like I've killed, you know, let's just say 700 Lazardos, and you have to use a hundred of those uh, Lazardos that you killed to like you basically like, like almost like a little like it looks like little pieces of paper, like wanted pictures, and you have to use those to like uh, get all the Lazardos out of that area, and then you can like you can buy things from those stables, or um, and those also like you know like. You see a lot of open world games where, like, you as you complete side missions, like you uh, make it safer for those people. And there's like a little bar that fills up in each section of the map, uh, and then there's like uh, actual like little challenge things you can do in the game, where it's like, all right, well you have five minutes to kill three hundred goblins, and you gotta go through and you just fight. It's like a smaller section of one of the main missions, and you go there and you fight, and you have to kill three hundred goblins in in uh, uh, five minutes, and then you unlock. Uh, more resources like like food like steaks it's like all the resources from the game plants steaks uh whatever and those rupees and shit like that and you all and uh, you level up too and um you, know, you can spend more resources on uh on stables or shops or like a village is overrun and you can use those resources that you've you've earned and run off the the bad guys blah blah and then like you can also use those to um uh, unlock that's also how you unlock more um more uh, combo attacks and stuff like that. And there's also a shopkeep you can go to uh, and level up your weapons or sell weapons off. Or uh, there's also one where like you can, um, you can learn how to create different foods, like different recipes and you can take those recipes and like add them to like, as like a, a bonus to your, um, your characters. So, like you can do it where like you do 5% more damage or you take 5% less damage or you, um, you earn a little bit more experience points as you kill enemies. Um, so yeah, like I said, the, you, there's only the first two missions in the game, but there's like three or four little challenge ones you can do. Um, and then like it stops there. Um, the overall, I think it took me like a little over an hour, probably an hour, and 15 minutes to do all that stuff. But I put about three hours into this demo gables where I am just <laughs> replaying, uh, these missions over and over again, uh, leveling up my characters. Like, uh, you start off with um, with Link, obviously, and then you unlock uh, Zelda in the second mission. And then what's the oh god, the old lady from the first from the game? Um, Impa. Impa, yeah. So you you get to play as young her uh, in this game, and you unlock her in the first mission. And I've just been like leveling because like in in the first game I played it, I always focused on like you know like the main two or three ones, and then like it sucked in like those side missions. We had to jump in and like you had to play, you had to play as Linkle. In like the thirteenth chapter, and it's like I've <laughs> used her like once, and she's on chapter three, and everybody else is in like the twenties, and it's like it just makes it more difficult. So I've been like, I know I'm gonna unlock more characters as you go, but like I've been uh, focusing on using Impa and Zelda and the other missions and like leveling them up too, because like 
the only thing is like does the challenge at least in the challenge ones that they have right now you can only use link in those so like right now he's like a level 16 or 17 and then like zelda and impa are like level eight and nine for me so it's like i've uh but it's also a good way like the doing the challenge stuff is a good way to grind resources so i don't know i've just been i'm having a blast with playing it like i was talking about before it's like probably my most displayed game of the year i wouldn't i probably wouldn't even bother checking out this demo if it went for the fact that you can carry over your pro your progress uh but i've had a blast and the other thing i did uh i bought little hope it's the uh um game from the until uh, dawn devs uh they had man of uh, madon come out last year i only played the first half an hour of it uh but I, um, i'm gonna play some more of that and i'll talk about it more on the next uh, show we do but that's all i've been playing with baby cables all right, a couple of games that I have been playing this week. Destiny 2, I have been playing a lot this week, mostly because I wanted to finish up a couple of lingering missions that my friends and I have been trying to tackle for the past month and a half or so. One of them being the mission called like the Whisper. This is an exotic quest where you have to go through four you have to go through this like all this platforming array. And then you have to go through these four rooms and stuff and clear them all out. And then the final room, you have to go through and clear out all the enemies and stuff. So basically, this is a whole exotic mission where you earn this one sniper rifle that has some of the highest impact of any other type of sniper rifle. And it's cool because it's like a fallen weapon and it's like black and white and it's kind of shaded to uh, have like... Uh, like gradients of like say white and then like kind of like a sparkling sort of like spacey looking black and stuff it's it's cool but it's also a very powerful heavy weapon so once you shoot and fire something you can freaking headshot something from like across the map and it's like an automatic kill which is so awesome when you get that but what's funny we accomplished this mission oh boy it took us like a good solid month to try to complete this mission honestly as a group one of my friends, who has been playing this game since Destiny 2 had launched, it took him six months in order to try to get this mission done. Because he was trying to do it himself, could not do it. Got one of our other friends and stuff, both of them couldn't do it. So they invited me along and stuff, and we managed to figure out a way to consistently go to the platforming sections, go through the first couple rooms, and then the last time, all through the trials and errors... I ended up doing some with my Titan. I switched up his uh, subclass stuff, so he's like, he's got his solar subclass stuff, but uh, you could switch around on different types of abilities, and there's this one ability that Titan has when he does supercharge, where he swings his hammer, right? And he can swing it around like a tornado. So he literally holds the freaking sledgehammer and stuff with the hands and he's like doing a twirl and stuff and that goes in like a circular motion. You can move your character across and hit multiple different enemies and stuff. So I end up using that a lot on uh, this main main boss that we had in the final room, and we were able to finally, after a good solid maybe month of trying this and doing that stuff, we got that. But that's not even the craziest part. The craziest part was the next mission after that that we wanted to do. We tackled a dungeon, right? And Destiny 2 dungeons I had never experienced before. This one was especially huge because it rivaled that of like an, a traditional raid from what I've come to understand. I've never experienced a, like a, a raid inside of the Destiny games before. So this was a combination of three different parts. First one, we went, we tried to do a couple times and stuff. We finally got past that section. The second section was more like a platform-esque type of things where we had to go through on, we had to basically go through these these high up sort of platforms and they're very narrow and we had to try to navigate and jump around them so you needed like some precise platforming needless to say a lot of us died <laughs> but we weren't punished in regards to dying over and over again because there were some restricted areas where if your entire team goes through and dies you have to respawn at the checkpoint as a team that happened a couple times during the second portion of the room but we were able to go through the last portions of that. There was two to... Well, no, actually no. There was like about five different rooms in the second half alone. The second section alone that we had to go through and defeat all these fallen enemies. All of these sniper rifle... All these sniper rifle toting 
fallen hobgoblins. I ended up becoming better with the uh, Whispering Slab, the combat bow. Because <laughs> what I had been doing is when I'm at the tower, I'm going through this one machine that allows me to invest in certain type of umbral engrams, which guarantee you a legendary, and sometimes an exotic if you get lucky. I kept getting this one item called the Whispering Slab, which is a fantastic crossbow with different types of traits. I was able to go through and snipe a whole bunch of these fallen hobgoblins chip away like half or like a quarter and then headshot them so it would take me maybe two to three shots sometimes in order to take them out so i was playing sniping duty while on top of uh, trying to get certain aspects of the room cleared so we can go on the next one so finally after all that we clear the second half the second part of the mission now after each mission is complete we're earning a whole lot of different materials like armor weapons different types of uh, items and stuff because these give heavy rewards for your time and effort put into them which i would highly expect so because throughout that whole experience it took us two hours to go through every like all three of the subsequent missions inside of this one dungeon the last one was the hardest one and i say that because of the final boss battle now, before you reach the boss battle room, there are particular types of symbols you have to look at. So, the first one we encountered was like a hawk, and so we had to find the correct temple with the like the symbol of a hawk. And then that would lead to something, it would actually foretell you which one you need to look for next. And while you go through and find this, you have to defeat all the enemies in that particular room in order to advance. So, we were in the hawk room, we defeat all the enemies that were around there. Then we have to find the salmon room, that salmon symbol room, or the snake symbol room, or the double snake symbol room, and so on and so forth. So we were doing this for a while. I think it was like seven to eight rooms. Then finally when we get to the last boss battle, it was literally this wizard in the room with three of his disciples, these big looking troll things, right? Which are three of them. And the kicker about it is, if you are able to defeat all three of those, you will gain an extravagant boost in order to defeat the wizard. We tried this for a good solid 45 minutes to not only clear out this room and get it consistent, but we actually have, I actually have the video footage of what I pre-recorded through PlayStation, through PlayStation Plus stuff, well, PS4 in general of us finally thinking, okay, what happens, my friend suggested, hey, why don't we use my ability, which helps tether these guys, and while I'm using the ability to go through and swing around with my hammer and stuff inside of a circle. Now bear in mind, this is like the seventh or eighth attempt that we've done this boss, and I'm like, you know what, let's try it. So the boss battle opens, he lures all three of them to us, and so he goes through and tethers them, I trigger my supercharge. I go and I swing my hammer around in a circle, all three of them, and I do enough damage to all three are dead. We finally was able to chip away at the armor and get all three of them dead at the same time. We got these huge power boosts. <clears throat> go to the wizard that's at the back of the room. We let loose. I have this exotic auto rifle. Excuse me, just one moment. <coughs> Whew. I have this one exotic auto rifle that I had earned earlier the night previously that acts like a Gatling gun. This thing uses primary ammo instead of heavy. This thing, if you hold down the trigger, it fires, I kid you not, like a good solid 100, 100 something rounds or something inside of one clip. I ended up going through using this weapon. It burned through that wizard's hp nice. enough to where we got it on the first like the first phase of it we had been working on that thing for like close to an hour we were able to blaze through the things like hp and stuff we got all of those buffs from all three of those giants that we had killed we had destroyed and we were able to do that we accomplished that God, I had joined my friends like around nine something last night, and we got done like around two, like one thirty or two in the morning. 
I kid you not, it was that long. We had about five hours worth of like quality game time just last night. So that's Destiny 2 stuff. I'm still waiting on the Beyond Light stuff because that's supposed to be dropping on Tuesday. Not sure if I want to go through and invest upon it on Friday when I get paid next because I'm planning on possibly getting a new game to start on like uh, Extra Life, you know. Nice. Probably try to find that one game or something where I want to try to stream or whatever. But I still have in the back of my mind that I do want to invest in Beyond Light. I just want to try to invest upon it maybe in a, in a different date. Because I'm preoccupied with the other game I've been playing right now, and that is Ghosts of Tsushima. I started Ghosts of Tsushima earlier on last week. Story aspect of it, I feel is fine. I mean, I do love the whole, like, uh, revenge sort of story element inside of uh, this game. I do like that uh, your character's kind of struggling with this honor system, you know, between him being an honorable samurai, and then you have the things where you want to survive and try to do things by any means and stuff with a ghost sort of uh, element to it combat is silky smooth man mm -hmm. i absolutely love this combat inside of uh, ghost of tsushima press the l1 button you're able to go through and parry specific like uh, attacks or enemies you can upgrade your character so it has that sort of rpg sort of like element to it this is what I feel like Assassin's Creed should have been in regards to quality, in regards to the looks and the fidelity. Even if the game isn't, like, say, running a consistent 60 frames per second, in some parts of it, you do have the options to where you can do, a, like, a high definition of the HDR stuff, or you can do a performance mode where the thing just runs like butter, you know? I have it on performance mode. I tried it inside the HDR, the high dynamic range stuff, it looks very, very pretty. I mean, I love watching this game in motion because through the autumn leaves falling on the ground to yes. the various dista, the vistas and stuff, this is an absolute gorgeous game. On top of that, I feel that this is the best open world exploring element that Sucker Punch has ever done for one of their games. Everything has a good visual cue to it. You don't have like regular markers. You could mark something on the map so you can go through, but even when you do that through the sub menu, I love the visual cue of it. The wind will blow in a specific direction, especially if you swipe up on the touchpad on the DualShock 4. The wind will blow a specific direction. You can go and you can follow it, but along the way, you'll discover a whole bunch of different elements. Like, say, You'll follow a bird, like a golden bird, and it'll lead you yep. to a specific place, either for a hot spring or maybe to a Shinto-like shrine. There have been times I've uncovered fox dens by mistake, but I absolutely love following these foxes. It's it's so cool when you actually stumble upon one because you'll hear their little yip, 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 yep. and you'll go through, you'll follow them, and they're running throughout the field, and everything's all running, and like, and so, such a beautiful, like, frame rate beautiful frame rate and stuff so smooth the just guys just cutting through the grass and it's just looks so like authentic looking you finally get to the fox dens you get to collect the various elements to increase your charms your charm slot and stuff so you're doing fox dens you're going to the shinto shrines and stuff making your uh due diligence you're writing haiku stuff which you can do in specific spots as well and I gotta admit, I really feel tempted just to go and just explore the whole area of the Ghost of Tsushima without even doing a lot of the main story missions right now. Yeah. I am that tempted. The story missions that I have done and some of the side quest stuff, I'm invested in them because a lot of them are fascinating. Like there's this one I completed where you encounter this one man... He is flagging you down for help, right? And so basically the Mongols have went through and captured his wife and his child, and he basically ran away. Quinn essentially, he tucked his tail between his legs and he ran and stuff. And I like the interaction between him and, like, uh, Gene and stuff. Because uh, Gene is just, like, physically angry with him because it's like, how the fuck can you advantage your wife and your child doing this and doing that? And so you finally find the clues. You you discover, like, like uh 
the horrible thing that actually did happen to both of them and stuff. And then you go through and you tell blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And the guy is, like, actually, like, just remorseful and stuff. He's, and the best part about it is, like, basically Jin kind of tells him, like, okay, it's like, you got to go ahead. You got to go ahead and move forward, do this, do that and stuff. And I felt that interaction just from that one side mission was very much worth the time and effort that I put into it. And it also continues the narrative of, like, this world being a lot more interesting and sort of its side characters and side missions as opposed to just go into the one checkpoint, doing this, mm -hmm. go on to the next one. Because I've seen plain examples of that. Q, Ghost Recon, Wildlands, where even though the overworld was all right and stuff, the side missions and what you could accomplish inside the game in terms of collectibles, it was bare. It was not flashy. It was not as interesting where I feel like that Sucker Punch has done the Ubisoft formula better than Ubisoft in this regards. Especially when it comes to the visual fidelities, hardly any types of glitches or any types of things I've actually seen in this game. It feels like Sucker Punch has taken their time, paid enough due diligence to their attention and their intentions to provide a quality experience. I love Sucker Punch games. I've played through Sly Cooper 1, I've played through the, both of the infamous games, I tried out Second Son... But I gotta admit, Ghost of Tsushima, from what I've played, I've played roughly six and a half hours of this game this week. Nice. And that in and of itself is fascinating to me. I thought that it'd be the type of game I'd play in chunks and do this and do that. But I'm finding myself getting immersed, not knowing this, like maybe for a couple of hours, just exploring the main field, the main area of it. And I still wanna do that. I'm accomplishing my missions and try to recruit people to help me save, uh, like, a Jean's uncle and stuff like that. But I'm upgrading stuff. I'm upgrading my swords. I'm getting a bunch of different types of armor and different types of dyes and stuff, which I did unlock that the last time. I got found this one dude that does, like, uh, dye jobs in some of your attire, and you can make them look like a custom sort of, uh, like a... Like a custom, like colored, like uh, samurai whatsoever. Like yeah. I have all of his stuff, like in white, and so it's like when I'm going through with that, plus the headband that I have on, it's also tinted like that. It, I love the customizations in Ghost of the Tsushima. You can do, you can look so fantastic with what you want to go through and and uh, present yourself as and stuff. Like, say if you want to go through like a like a dye of purple or do this and that, you do have an option to do so. Man. I am just gushing about this game. It provides a lot of fun elements to it. You are prompted to explore the open world. It's fascinating. The character, the side characters are pretty fun. The main story stuff I feel is fun as well. It plays in good part. The abilities, the stances you unlock. I mean, there's so much stuff to dive into that you could literally spend a good solid 40 to 60 hours in this game trying to get every single bit. But... Uh, Yes. After all that, I'm done with what I've been playing. <laughs> nice. No, that game was great. I, I was with you though. Like that first section I got when I after I at the beginning, I, I think I spent the first 15 hours just. I think I did maybe five of that was doing the main missions, and then the rest was just exploring the world, doing going to fox ends, paying the fox, most important thing, paying the fox, and then just yep. you know petting the fox. Yeah, that's all. You know, it's, it's what you gotta do. You know, just going and going through and taking over uh, camps, shit like that. Yeah, the game, yeah, the game easily sucks you in. Oh it's a great my game. god, dude, the camp stuff. And I love it that you can do standoffs in this game, or yeah. if you just want to basically go through and just like fuck some shit up and stuff. It's like snipe them across with your bow, go across, just maybe stab, like assassinate some dude with your dagger and stuff, and then all of a sudden it's like you parry one dude, slice this and that, holding the the triangle button if you're doing a standoff and just automatically just do like a one hit kill like up on like a huge enemy you know it's so satisfying yeah gameplay is so satisfying yeah it is it's, it's great but um yeah I think that's gonna do it for this week guys uh check us out we're on everything Drunk Testers Podcast Twitch YouTube iTunes uh everything Facebook Twitter uh we're on, everything. We're on all of them so check us out in those places like follow subscribe Share, share is a big one for us. Sharing will help us more than anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, leaving those comments, uh, liking us, watching our videos, whatever you do to help us, we really would appreciate it. And until next time, I was host, I was Tyler. And I have been Colonel Gables. Until next week, for you guys, thank you very much for listening 
to another fun-filled episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Hey, Gables. Yep. Too sweet. Too sweet, man. Bye, guys. See ya.